Shalom, brothers and sisters. Welcome to Ancient Path Remnant. I hope you're doing well. So I wanted to share with you a little bit about what happened on Shabbat, last Shabbat, and share with you the lesson, the life lessons I learned. Yahuwah speaks to me that way, probably many of you as well, through life experiences, through the animals or nature or with people. You always go through a, an actual testing or a lesson in the natural to teach you spiritual things, which is why our Messiah spoke in parables. But anyway, so I wanted to share with you what happened. So on Shabbat, this last Shabbat, um, in the morning, there was a dog that was laying under some trees by my house. And um, so where I live, it's out in the country and it's kind of far off, kind of far off the road. So it's pretty far, you know, in the country. So this dog, it's not unusual for dogs to end up on the property. I mean, it, it doesn't happen very often, but it, it can happen and it has happened but anyway so on Shabbat this dog she lay herself down under some trees by the house and she couldn't move anymore she couldn't move her body she was completely exhausted it was her last I believe she came to die basically or to live if you want to look at it another way but at that moment, she lay under those trees, I think, to, to die. The interesting thing is, you know, well, she was so emaciated and so just completely um, skinny and starved. And so, you know, when I tried to feed her, I gave her food and some water and, and um, you know, wasn't sure if she was vicious. It turns out she's a pit bull. And I didn't know if she was vicious or not. And um, so I would slowly put the food in there and try to put water close enough so she could get it because she wasn't able to really move at the, at the time. So she has spent all her energy trying to get, you know, to my house. And she had to actually go also through a gate to get near the house to these trees to actually even be seen and on the property there are lots of trees so it's like the fact that she chose those trees by the house that I could even see her you know that she could even be seen is just amazing to me and how far she had to go and if you think about it if that was her last effort to get you know any kind of help how she ended up there not only on the sabbath but it was her last you know, basically last effort to go anywhere and she was completely exhausted and emaciated, dehydrated. So, you know, just the fact that she even made it to my house to a place where she could even be seen because there were plenty of other trees she could have tried to lay under that she would have never been seen. And I believe she came there you know, by the hand of Yah. I mean, there's no other really way to explain it. So, you know, because of all the other places she could have ended up, all the other times she could have ended up, you know, different days and things like that, but it was the Sabbath and it was this, you know, this need, this hunger and thirsting. And um, so I found out she's a pit bull and, but as I was putting the food near her, but not too close, she licked my hand. And so I realized she was nice and slowly started to pet her. And it was like she was so starved for attention. She just loved being petted and loved the attention. And she, as hungry as she was, you know, she stopped eating just to be just to have me pet her for a very long time. And she was just so, it was almost like she was more starved for that, you know, attention and that love than even the food it seemed at the time. And um, so anyway, she, you know, began to get a little bit of energy back and she'd walk around and things like that. But she, she clearly was abandoned and um, she seems like a very well behaved dog, very sweet. 
but she has a lot of like scratches on her face and things like that and so she's been in thorny places and rough places and also she had an encounter with a skunk which probably was like a day or two prior because it wasn't terrible but it, it was bad enough but it was definitely not you know completely um you know like a fresh smell it was um probably a day or two that she had an encounter with a skunk so she had that smell on her so you know all these things just reminded me of how like you know in the world we're like you know we're the prodigal children in the world and how we were and how we get so dirty and filthy like she's got this skunk smell and you know we have to be cleansed and you know cleansed uh, we have to repent and be forgiven and and I covered her so I covered her with a sweater and just like you know we have to be covered by our Messiah you know and wrapped in his robe of righteousness his atoning blood that covers our sins and you know cleans us up by washing of the water of the word and you know having the Ruach HaKodesh fill us to cleanse us uh, you know and burn off all that sin nature within us so there's an internal cleansing that we do and I couldn't help but think about this dog and how Yahuwah you know has continually showed me the famine of the word we read that in Amos about the famine of the word so you know I'll read a little bit of that in Amos 11 Oh, uh, let's see. Amos 8, 11. Behold, the days are coming, declares Yahuwah, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine of bread nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of Yahuwah. They shall wander from sea to sea and from north to east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of Yahuwah, but they shall not find it. And in that day, the virgins and the young men shall faint for thirst, those who swear by the guilt of Samaria, and say, As your Elohim lives, O Dan, and as the way of Beersheba lives, they shall fall and never rise again. It just, it's just like this dog. She, you know, she could have just perished there that day, um, depending on if she had been any other place. The one place she came was a place to get food, to get shelter, to get water, to be, have her hunger and thirst quenched. I think about the spiritual condition of people, spiritual condition of mankind. You may not be able to see it on the outside. Sometimes you can, but a lot of times it's a spiritual condition that people have that they you know, it's this internal drought condition, the spiritual, you know, dehydration, this barren land within them. You know, our lives are like a garden. And so we have to plant the good seed within us and we have to have the living water flowing through us and the love of our creator flowing through us and, you know, guarding that within us, guarding his word. And so to be a well-watered garden and so we see you know with this dog it's like she found a place of comfort she found a place of rest she found someone who showed her for once however long she had been a weary traveler that she found someone to show her compassion and love and mercy and there's the scripture that says even the dogs eat the crumbs from the master's table. But how much more important are you or Yahuwah's children that he wants us to return to him with all of our hearts to find that comfort, to find that rest. And when you think of Shabbat that day, you know, our Messiah said that it's okay to do good on the Sabbath. It's okay to feed people and he healed people on the Sabbath. And it, it just kind of shows me this work that we're going into that, you know, he's leading us to green pastures. He's leading us to a place of rest and to be happy. He gave me that name over a year ago, um, Haniah, and it means in Hebrew, a place of rest and to be happy. And just thinking how grateful this dog is and was to to actually have someone show her after how long i mean she was on the verge of death um 
to actually have some compassion and mercy and someone cover her, cover her, you know, and give her warmth and shelter and a place of rest and to be happy. And um, how refreshing that must feel to all of us. You know, if you think about it in terms of when we return to our father and through our Messiah and we take those vows of the commandments, it's a vow. These are instructions, house rules, wedding vows. If we're not agreeing to the terms and conditions of the house, we don't get to enter in through the, the door, our Messiah. So that's our vow to, you know, agree to the commandments. And then we grow in that understanding. The fourth commandment being the Sabbath day. And there's a rest, you know, for a rest for Yahuwah's people And so the Sabbath is really a a rest and a refreshing and a renewing of our bodies, our nefesh, our soul nature, our inner being. And how, how much, you know, she is already such a loyal dog already. And it reminds me of the scripture where it says, those who have been forgiven much love much. And, you know, when she's been rescued from such a, a, a weary place, a difficult and sad condition to be revived, I bet you she will be the most loyal pet ever. And um, so I named her her Rose. And my dad had a dream about someone finding a dog and naming it Survivor. So I named her Survivor Rose. And the reason that I thought to call her Rose is because, you know, she had the cuts on her face and she's been in, you know, thorny places. And so beauty, her disposition is so sweet. You would think that a pit bull, or at least I've heard that they can be vicious depending on how they're raised. And She's actually super, super sweet, despite what she had gone through. Even when I was feeding her, she, you know, she was very sweet, as hungry as she must have been. And this sweet, beautiful, blooming flower, this rose, comes out of thorny conditions, out of difficult situations. And you may have felt like you've been going through those difficult and thorny situations and you're all cut up and beat up or... And, you know, but beauty comes from challenges and trials and difficulties and loyalty. When Yahuwah saves us, when our good shepherd wraps us and covers us and protects us, and we agree to wash ourselves clean of that, that smell of sin, you know, where she's got that skunk smell. And it takes a few washings to get rid of that smell. And just like us, we have to continually wash in the water of the word, renewing our minds daily and removing the sin nature from our nefesh, our soul nature, and continually putting off the sinful mind and not running around with the world, staying where we, you know, where we know we can have shelter and protection and be taken care of. And, you know, why would she run off now? Because she's she knows what it's like to be in the world like the prodigal son. You know, he knows that the world is a difficult place and it'll, it'll make you dehydrated and starve to death for the true love of our creator to protect us and give us comfort, shelter from the sun and and that healing and nourishing and, and that love and compassion and mercy. Um... When we come back home to Yahuwah, we come back to that place of rest. We come back and realize that our Father loves us beyond anything and wants us to return home, wants us to be under His protection, wants us to be covered by the blood of our Messiah, the atoning blood, so that we can be forgiven of our sins and washed clean and so that he can nurture us and heal all of our wounds our scratches and our you know these things that have that beat beat us up in the world and their their wounds within our nefesh their wounds in our soul and um, in our inner being he wants to heal those things he wants us to return home and be refreshed on the sabbath and every day but the sabbath once we understand that the sabbath is a an establishing of a relationship 
um, that says that it's a sign between Yahuwah and his people that they will keep the Sabbath day and that that day is, is a miracle working power of, you know, a miracle day for healing. When we rest in him, when we put off all the things of the world, we put off all of our burdens and we leave them outside the gate on Sabbath and we leave our burdens. And so then that day heals us and we enter into his rest. And, you know, the Sabbath is to be called a delight. And um, so this dog just reminds me that, you know, Yahuwah wants us to be healed. He wants us to also show compassion and mercy for those, all the people who are going to need that mercy and compassion, that comfort, that, sh you know, um, that understanding the covering and coming back home, being protected where we're safe from the harm of the world, where we're not running around and and loose in the world and so you know the enemy has access to our lives and can you know kill steal and destroy us this dog now has a place of comfort and to rest and to be protected and to be fed and nurtured and you know she can rest now and be healed and that's what the sabbath day offers us it offers us a place to be healed to have comfort and rest and refreshment, um, to drink of the living waters and to truly be fed the living mana and that healing place to be restored and renewed. So once we understand entering into his rest and truly receiving that on the Sabbath day, you know, and we enter into it really every day, but the Sabbath is such a special day that we get to sit at our master's table. We get to partake of the good of the land. We get to, you know, rejoice in him and fellowship with one another and know that, you know, we're not alone out in the world. And spiritually, he's calling his children home to a place of rest and to be happy. Hania, to revive us back from the dead, from a dead condition and to, you know, revive our inner being so that we can rejoice in him so that we can be abundant and fruitful for him just like this dog you know if if she's able to recover fully then she'll be a great a great dog who you know is loyal and um she already is is seems like such a sweet and under you know understanding dog and patient and she's just very smart and uh, I think she'll, I think she realizes that she's found a place to be safe and to be happy. And we have too in our Father's arms and through our Messiah. So I'm going to read a few scriptures and then I'll stop there and I'll probably update more on how her condition goes. But I hope this gives us inspiration to see that, you know, even dogs need compassion and mercy. Um, you know, even when you think of people, we can't look at anyone as not being worthy of compassion and mercy if they need to be fed, if they need water. We're to do good and we're to help others and to help them get covered and protected and understanding how the atoning blood of our Messiah covers our sins that we have to repent and forgive and and enter into his rest and put off all of our burdens and you know be healed we need a place to rest and be happy and that's what he's moving us into um, green pastures the sun of righteousness shall arise with healing in his wings and we shall leap like calves from a stall you know joyfully and so he's raising up you know shepherds to help lead the people to green pastures and but it's always our messiah it has to be you know our messiah is the good shepherd so those who are truly walking in that path Yahuwah is raising up people to help bring the truth of how to get covered how to be protected how to come home return home and you know be wrapped in that robe of righteousness and keep it clean keep our garments clean get the new shoes like the prodigal son and have the ring on the finger, the father gave his son a ring, new shoes, and, you know, a clean robe. 
And um, so our tzitzits represent the, you know, the commandments. It's like a wedding ring. And so I'm going to read Matith Yahu, Matthew 18, 12. What do you think if a man has a hundred sheep and one of them has gone astray? Does he not leave the ninety-nine on the mountains and go in search of the one that went astray? And if he finds it, truly I say to you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of my Father who is in the heavens that one of these little ones should perish. Think about how important you are. In John 10, 11, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. So, you know, Yahuwah says he's going to gather his people. He's going to, he's drawing them back home. He's drawing them back to the Sabbath rest to be healed, to be covered, to be protected, to be under his wings, you know, and not to, for us to stray anymore. And, you know, that condition of straying out in the world leaves us like this, that dog, you know, it's, you know, just needing to be fed, needing some compassion, needing some restoration and healing. So I think I'm going to be learning a lot from this dog um, about, you know, how, how we are supposed to be compassionate and merciful for all people. Everyone who needs to be fed, we should help feed them spiritually. You know, feeding people the word is a spiritual nurturing as well. So this this condition of the dog is, you know, the emaciated dog is oftentimes a spiritual condition in people, which also, you know, shows itself in the natural as well. I mean, it, it flows from spiritual into the natural. So there's a spiritual battle going on and we have to really be restored and healed and come home and um, be loved and nurtured by our Heavenly Father and His Son and the Ruach Kakodesh and to be, to be healed so that we can then go out and help nurture and heal and feed other people as well. So I'm going to stop there with the rose. Um, Rose's story, Survivor Rose, but um, I may update you how she does. But I just thought I'd share that just as a, as a testimony of the healing power of the Sabbath. She was revived. She came to die, but was revived on the Sabbath day, just like us. Hallelujah. We come home, return home to a place of rest and to be happy. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will catch you on the next one, y'all willing.